Hello and welcome back to QLab Tutorial. Today we're going to be speaking about fades and basically how to use them and the many ways that they become so beneficial in your every single day programming of QLab. Uh, fades are probably the most added cue in my show. I use them for everything. Um, let's take a look at a very simple fade right now. So um, look at the desktop here, or my workspace rather. Uh, you can see I added a uh, track in here. It's the I Like It, the Mega Mix. Don't judge my music choices. This was just on my desktop and I drug it in. So we're going to add a fade. And of course, with all of these major uh, cues, you do have um, shortcuts. So if you look next to the cue, you have a shortcut here, Command 7. If I just hit Command and the number 7, it automatically adds the fade cue in there. Of course, uh, alternately, you can just drag and drop that cue into the workspace like so. Now, of course, anytime you see a red X, it's because something is incorrect. Something is not connected. Something is not right. It is telling you this, which is brilliant because you can see mistakes very easily. Now, in a simple workspace like this with four or five cues, really easy to find mistakes. I have over 500 cues in a 45 minute show, uh, so it becomes very complicated to find where that mistake could possibly be. So, um, to get this fade to work, we're going to add that fade cue as a target to this. So we're going to drag the cue, the track, on top of the fade cue, like so. When you let it go, you would think that it automatically says we're correct, but it's not. Because now you've targeted the correct cue, but you haven't told it what to do with that fade. Fades aren't automatic. They don't just go, oh, you want the volume down. No, there's so many different... Uh, options with fades, you have to tell it what to do. So you're going to highlight the fade and you can see that all of these um, output of your audio levels are blank. What you're going to do is just grab this and drag it down to zero. And now you've just told it that you're going to turn the volume down. So that's what the fade is going to do. The fade is going to drag the master volume of that track all the way down to nothing. So let's say we start the track. Sorry. Uh, we're then going to fade the track out by clicking the fade cue. And as you can see, it fades down to nothing. However, you might have noticed something that's weird. The song is still playing. Now, there's advantages to this. Um, the advantages are don't stop the song because you may want to bring the volume to a certain level. So let's hit escape again. And uh, let's see what happens if I bring the volume down to, let's say, 23 dB. Okay? Let's try that now. And this is I use in the shows constantly. So there's your track. <clears throat> now we're going to fire the fade cue. And this time it just lowered the volume. So think about that. You've just told your track to go to a specific volume, which is normally what has to happen with the sound tech behind the sound booth, that when you come on stage and you start speaking, you're gonna lower that track a little lower so it doesn't overpower your voice. You now have the control to do that. So my background music automatically can be faded down manually with that cue at any point in time in the show. Now, the average way that somebody fades out a track is by having the fade, the fade go out and then stop the track. So let's uh, take a look at how to do that right now. So we're going to uh, select the fade cue and we're going to drag it all the way down to nothing. And then right here, you're going to see a little stop target when done checkbox. We're going to click that. And what that is, is that it's telling it after this cue finishes, we want to stop the target cue, end it. So in this case, we are going to start our music again. And now we're going to find the cue out. It's going to fade out. And now you can see it stopped the cue. So that's your simple fade out cues. Uh, like any of my um, cues in my show, I do not put them in my timeline like this or my workspace. 
I uh, actually always add them in a group, which I spoke about earlier. Groups are easier to navigate because when you want to change, uh, make a new show file or change when you come on stage or when this song happens, you don't need to bring all of those individual files in and possibly make a mistake by forgetting to bring in one of the fades or forgetting to bring in one of the um, intros or the tracks. So I always make a group. So we're going to do a drag a group to the um, workspace here. We're going to grab both of those. We're going to drag them in. And this is entrance theme. So let's say that's the entrance theme that you're going to use when you walk on stage. Okay. Um, so now you're going to make sure that this is fire all children simultaneously, like we spoke about before. And we're going to make sure that's timeline. Okay. So in this case, we're not going to fade out the track. We're going to fade in the track. Uh, your fade this time is going to go up to zero. You can just do that easier by clicking zero in this window right here. Enter. Now, you're not going to stop the target when done because you want the song to fade in. So you don't want the song to fade in and then stop the song. So you can uncheck that. Okay. And this time, instead of leaving this at zero, which is where the track is designed, we're going to bring it all the way down. We're doing just the opposite of the fade out. We're doing a fade in. So <clears throat> we're going to hit this track now. Okay, and you can see it faded in. Now, if you want that fade in to happen over a very longer period, uh, you can then do the action right here. I also want to show you a quick tip. You can go to here to the settings. You can go to large display size of Q rows. Click large and that'll <clears throat> make these all a lot larger for you to see. I don't use large because I have too many cues and it just becomes too hard to navigate. Uh, but in this case, I'll just show you to zoom in a little bit. So uh, if you go here to large uh, view of this, you can see that uh, there is your track. There is your fade, I like it, in. And this time our action is three seconds. We're going to move our action to nine seconds and see the difference of how that fades in. Okay. Now it's all the way in. Okay. Now there's many reasons why you'd want to use fade cues, um, fade in tracks, fade out tracks, uh, but you're going to use fade cues to make things sound better. And I'll share that in the next video. Yeah.